Respect to see us in service. Stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. This is Monday, November 6th. If you have any questions or comments, uh, come up and <coughs> point them over there and go to your name, name and address and uh, what's on your mind and direct your questions to this council, please. Call the roll, please. Theater? Here. Fowler? Here. Kufa? Here. Laporte? Here. Paul? Present. Bolt? Here. Watt? Here. All present. Thank you. Number four is consent agenda, A City Council minutes of October 16th, 2023, regular meeting recommendation approved, and the Golf Commission minutes of September 12th, 2023, meeting recommendation received. Motion to approve A and B, or three and four is A and B as presented. Four questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Number five, orders resolution, A, resolution 2335, early voting site. Yes, um, at a previous meeting, I let council know that the early voting plan was approved by the election commission. The resolution before you formally establishes the early voting sites and it's required because we're changing the location of the polling location. So um, the, the top part of the resolution reiterates everything that we talked about with the early voting plan and why we need to have one and once adopted, the resolution will authorize to implement the early voting plan and establish the early voting sites. Specifically, it will establish the early voting site, which includes nine consecutive days of early voting, starting the second Saturday before the election to the Sunday prior to the election, and establishes one early voting site for all three wards at the municipal building here, 547 North Kearney Drive, and sets the standard time on each day to be 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So this will formalize the polling location for that. So each ward would come here for early voting? Correct. For the nine days of early voting, each ward will vote here. So communication will need to be established to all uh, registered voters. So we'll start working on that after this resolution. So we need a motion? Yes, yes. sir. So moved. Or, any questions? Call the roll, please. Valor? Yes. Kufa? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Paul? Yes. Bolt? Yes. Watt? Yes. Cedar? Yep. Resolution adopted. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll just follow that up with, um, this is obviously new and we're establishing this polling location for the early voting site. And throughout the year of 2024, we'll monitor it. And then if we decide something needs to be changed, we'll come back to city council to, to make any changes. But as of right now, we have no idea how many people are going to come each day during those nine days, how it's going to affect election day itself. So um, this is where we're starting. I think it's a, a good start. Again, the election commission decided, you know, let's do all at one one spot and see how it goes. But um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number six, Ports Administration, Ace. Superintendent, Mr. Bishop, what do you got? I do, I have, I have a few items to discuss uh, this evening. I'd like to start out though, by recognizing uh, three city employees um, and, and over the last few months, they've just been, uh, they've actually gone above and beyond. And, and one in particular was just a word certificate of completion. Uh, I don't mean to embarrass them. I know you're here, Bob. I'm not here to embarrass you, but I would like to recognize Bob Beath for the successful completion of the turf grass keys to disease identification management course as approved by the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, Pesticide and Plant Pest Management Division. It's important to know, and I think it's important to recognize that when, a, when somebody who works for the city goes above and beyond and continues their continuing education and takes it as serious as Bob has taken it, I think it's important that we do recognize um, those achievements. So thank you. We appreciate that. I would also like to recognize uh, Lynette Obi and Angie Schonk. They're not here this evening, but it's important to know that the state of Michigan is, um, in the accounting world, when you look at something like the chart of accounts, and this is where every general ledger number has a very specific code and for each code has to be organized at the state level to the city level for auditing purposes. The state of Michigan updated their chart of accounts, uh, accounts which then drop the domino for all municipalities to come in line with that new standard chart of accounts. Thousands and thousands of codes 
need to be reviewed and modified and updated. Um, months ago, it was actually in the spring, uh, Lynette and Angie took on this challenge and they've been diligent at it. Um, they've successfully submitted all of the updated codes back through BSNA so they could test our system to align with the state of Michigan's new chart of accounts and we've been successful. And I think it just hats off to two people who work with numbers and the state of Michigan <laughs> combine the two is not the easiest task, but they did something um, uh, remarkable. So that's why we're making our comments to them tonight. So congratulations um, for a job well done, Bob, Lynette, and Angie. Thank you. Um, one other thing, I have, some, I have some good news. Okay, <laughs> it's not all good news. Oh. So um, when we, we have through the city of valve turning program, and uh, just quick education, what a valve turning program is this? We need to exercise the valves within this, the city. And the big valves, if you don't exercise these valves uh, continuously and have a program behind it, the valves can actually stick, right? Or they break, okay? So part of our valve turning program, we're doing that. Well, uh, a large valve, a valve that actually supports the south side of the river and the south side of town is broken. Not in any type of it's not an emergency, but it needs to be repaired. This was brought to my attention last week, and typically the course of action is anything over $10,000 I need to seek approval for, have a meeting, have a vote, um, go out to bid. This I considered an emergency because we have major water infrastructure, and that piece of equipment broke. So I made the call to have that, that work done and to be fixed. The cost of this job was $22,000. I apologize that the pro procedure for something like that wasn't followed to a T. I have been read it close enough to know that if I have that, em that emergency authority, but that valve needed to be replaced. It needed to be fixed. And so I made the call to do that. So I just wanted to make it clear to the board that when we see in, uh, in the bills, if you see that, uh, that price come up $22,000 and there's a question about it because you don't recall ever talking about or voting on it, that is why. Okay. That's all I have, unless there's any questions about that. No? Okay. All right, what would it be, City Attorney, have anything? Uh, Your Honor, uh, the October 16th meeting, uh, there was an amendment to the animal control ordinance proposed. Uh, uh, in fact, the, uh, the uh, second reading or the, uh, it was up for adoption, it was tabled. And I just wanna let council know that uh, administration is working on addressing some of the concerns that were raised. Um, I'm speaking with some of my peers that have similar ordinances <coughs> in other communities. And I know that uh, administration has done outreach to some um, experts in the community who uh, you know, have volunteered their expertise to weigh in on, on some of these issues we're, uh, we're uh, handling. So uh, it's my expectation we should have the uh, answers and, and hopefully have the ordinance back before, uh, take it off the table and back before council uh, by the first meeting of December. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions for Mr. Downey? Uh, city departments, Annette, I know you have something over there. Yes, a couple announcements for the public and then some awareness for council. Uh, first, there is no election here for City of St. Clair voters tomorrow. There's no candidate races or proposals for the City of St. Clair. So um, when you start seeing election results and everything, um, we don't have anything to share for tomorrow. There, I think there's three elections in St. Clair County. I think they're all school proposals, but again, there will not be an election held in the City of St. Clair tomorrow. Uh, last week, I attended another session from the Bureau of Elections on the early voting implementation and we've been receiving guidance finally everything's coming together i'm fully confident we're ready for february so um, just continuing to order supplies and we're we're ready for it so i'm thankful for all of those training sessions and the ability to go so thank you for allowing that um, they're extremely beneficial um, next the annual business license renewal has begun um, all businesses receive a pre-filled application and invoice due by the end of december so the reason I'm bringing this up, um, our fees haven't changed. There's a renewal fee of $20 a year, $40 if it's late. We're going to closely monitor our time this year of how um, long it takes to process these uh, applications and make note of it for next year's budget cycle. If we need to increase those fees, it'll be part of next year's recommendation, but we're gonna monitor it uh, this year. And, and we've been really trying to think how to make that electronic and we've, we're looking into different 
options for that, but as of right now, it's still paper back and forth and it's pretty time consuming. But FYI, we're gonna be looking into that and there may be a, a recommendation for next year. Next, the Cemetery Board of Trustees is interested in partnering with Reese Across America. We've been talking about it at um, almost every monthly meeting for the last couple of months. We hope to be part of the ceremony next year in December of 2024. And in preparation of that, review of all of our burial records is taking place. Each and every burial record is being reviewed to see if there's a veteran status marked on it. And I just wanted to publicly thank Deb Emmerich for her uh, volunteer time. She's been graciously and generously sharing her time to go through each one of these records. It's a big task. Uh, I don't know how many there are, but, but there's a lot. So uh, thankful for her time and we can look forward to that next year. Next, city offices will be closed on Friday, November 10th in observance of Veterans Day. And looking into the setting the calendar for next year of 2024 meetings, as you know, we meet the first and third Monday of every month. The city offices will be closed Monday, January 1st and Tuesday, January 2nd in observance of New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So the first applicable meeting of the new year would be Wednesday, January 3rd. So I wanted to mention that it's a little out of the ordinary. And if there's any issues with any quorum, let me know um, before that schedule comes before you for approval. And that schedule will probably come the first meeting in December to set for next year. So I just wanted to put that out there too. So think about it, let us know. Uh, otherwise, we'll schedule the first meeting for Wednesday, January 3rd. And again, that'll come before you in December. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Nat? We'll go to the boards, committees, commissions, Council reps, anybody have anything to report? All right, let's go on to, we have no unfinished business. Number eight is new business. Uh, Chiefs here to some special events, at least in Palmer Park for a bizarre fireworks display, public, public fireworks display permit. Chief? Mayor, Mayor and Council, I have a request from the Chamber for their annual holiday lights. That will be the light decorations on the businesses downtown from November 17th to the 31st of January. Their Christmas market, when this was done, they didn't have a date. And that, have they come up with a date yet for? No, but I believe it will be one weekend in December, but we don't have that, that weekend nailed down yet. Okay. And then uh, their Icy Bazaar, which will be January 17th through the 22nd, which will include fireworks on that Saturday. Now, all their paperwork is in, so I recommend approving it. No move. Four. All right, motion made support of questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, thank you, Chief. And do you Ready have to down. handle the lease and stuff separate? That's not me, right? Right, I just had a question on that. Since the, the special event approval had a lease of Palmer Park, does that have to be separate or is it fine with just that? <coughs> it's, it's uh, <coughs> excuse me, with the approval, it's, uh, it's all fine to be uh, executed. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay, we'll go to 8B, approved purchase of CAT 926-3RQ and front loader. Mr. Bishop. This evening, I'd like the, uh, the council to consider um, a new purchase. This is a Caterpillar 926-3RQ front loader. It's a replacement for the city's current CAT front loader. The available balance right now in the equipment pool, um, including uh, cash and value in all assets, is north of a million dollars. The requested purchase amount is 203000 in change. This piece of equipment replaced the existing 21-year-old front loader currently in operation. Um, I myself toured DPW Building Reserve, looked at the equipment to learn about the cost and the maintenance of said piece. I've learned a lot just about what what we're facing in terms of um, update uh, updates to the tune-ups of the engine and the transmission and to replace just two tires, which just two tires um, to replace on this thing is $12,000. So the price is adding up pretty quickly. I think we're at that turning point now where we could actually receive quite a bit of value in the trade-in and then to re-outfit the DPW um, with a new front loader. There is availability in the equipment pool, and this is a state-approved quote from Michigan CAT for the Caterpillar Model 926-3QR. The quote is attached for your review. The $38,000, is that for the trade-in for the old? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then the total cost is... 165, 664. No, that's, that's with the trade in value. That's with the trade in value. Mm -hmm. Good 
Hearing no other questions, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve. I'll support that. The motion may support questions. Call roll, please. Just to confirm, the amount is two hundred and three thousand six hundred and sixty-four dollars and eighty-one cents. Yes, correct. Yes. Uh, correct. Dollar. Yes. Hoofa. Yes. Report. Yes. Paul. Yes. Bolt. Yes. Watt. Yes. Cedar. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Claims accounts October 1925 and November 2nd, 2023. Hearing no questions, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve as presented. Support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Go to number 10, public questions and comments. Anybody have any non-agenda items? Uh, three minutes, please. Come on up here. Give us your name and address, please. Dan Chilwood, 1382 Golf Street. I got two questions. Um, I've heard you talk about the water tower out by Amanda. Where exactly is that going? So the, there's a one acre parcel that's just west of the CSX rail okay. depot shop. So it's, if you went up Magna Drive, or which, which is basically extension of Christian Bihas, if you got right to the stub of that and you looked east, that's where the tower would okay, go. Okay, right by that pond area? Yes, it's actually, in the, it's, it's there for that reason. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then the other question, and this is what I talked about. So I seen on your road map that, that you had Goff Street highlighted that needed to be upgraded. So 30 years ago, and I don't know if Bill remembers, they did Goff Street in the early mm -hmm. 90s. And I was just wondering if they did the water lines, or are they going to do the water lines when they do them? Because we had an incident the other night again. Yes, sir. And so, as a matter of fact, we have worked with Eagle, our civil engineer, and again, Bob Beath. Um, he has expedited to make sure that that permits goes through, that we can replace the water line. It would be a board job. It's something that's scheduled. AEW right now is working with Eagle to finalize the permits. But that is going to be done before the road gets done. And we are going to be just as aggressive next year okay. as we were this year getting so, all those road paved. So that'll probably be next year or whatever? No, the, the wa new water main will go in this year. Okay. And then the road's down the road, down the way, so a little bit. Next year. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Dan. Any other public questions or comments? Bill Plain at 1374 Southers. I heard you mention you're going to do the water line this year. Yes. Got to have enough time to put it out for bid? Or just give me another emergency job and give it to someone? No, um, no, it's it's not one of those gigs where we're we're just foregoing the procedure. Um, I'll speak back to the comment about the valve turn. When that valve broke, I understand that it's one of the larger valves that supplies the south side of the city. I understand. And that. so when that valve goes and it's compromised, I felt it was necessary to replace that valve as soon as possible. Um, heaven forbid something were to happen to that line where the south side either have contaminated water, broken water, and we were waiting on the, the bids to come in and wait and, and to negotiate the bids. I understand that part so, of it, but. So we, we, you know, we took that, I took that seriously. I knew I had to make a judgment call, so I did. And that's why we got the valve done, that project in the way that it went. In this case, no, we will be, yeah, I should say yes, we are following the procedure to have this go out to bid for All the water main. Right. All I want to know, thank you. You're welcome. Any other public comments or questions tonight? I will move to number 11, Mayor and City Council. I have a couple quick things. Uh, this was on my desk when I got here. This November 11th, Saturday, 9 to 3, the Christmas Arts and Crafts and Vendor Show, $5 hot dog lunches, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on uh, Saturday, $2 admission, more crafters this year, exclamation point. Shop for your... Shop early for your one-of-a-kind, unique Christmas gifts and support our local vendors. Code seats to help local charities. High Tours Golf Course. Then also, in the spirit of Christmas, Santa Parade, Friday, November 17th, 6 o'clock. Anybody else have anything else? I just have a question about the property just north of Gearing. I know it's, we would put the fence there and it's, it's been dug up, and I know that a couple years ago, we talked about that being some type of senior housing. What is that supposed to be now, or is that 
people have walked away from it. What's happened to that? I'm going to have to, I hate doing this. I never like to be stuck here when I don't have an answer for you for this. But because it has changed as many times as it has, I'm going to get with D Boiler and I can get an updated project update. I'll find out ownership and plans and what the timeline is. I don't know how many times I've been asked and I just I don't have an answer. So. It, it, was, it was promising that the land started to be cleared, considering then there's actual activity, right? Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't make investments in land clearing if you didn't want to proceed with something else. So they could be back into, I don't want to speculate. I'll get an answer for you and figure out from D where they're at. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? I just want to reiterate the, that craft show on Saturday. Any of the proceeds, again, go to our local charities. So it's arts, crafts, vendors, and a bake sale. So if you can go over, it's, it stays in the community and uh, you start in your Christmas present. I'll mention something. It's, it's just a side note. You mentioned the January calendar, so I just looked ahead. There's five Mondays in January this year. So maybe we consider doing the 8th and the 22nd, put mm -hmm. our meetings on Mondays as usual the 8th and the 22nd and then it still gets us a week in between each one for the first and third of the of february mm. for our consideration if you want to look forward at that we can present both those ideas the wednesday yeah. and the wolf and see what happens yeah do we have an update on the bike path clinton <laughs> yes <laughs> taking this last note so the latest update I actually received from AT&T, there was one set of utilities that needed to be moved and then a manhole cover. They basically needed to bring it down to depth. What had happened was um, early on, uh, the contractor hit a line. So that set them back. So they had to go back in, pull the line, get it back deeper underground. That was the first problem. Manhole covers were then set at the level of the curb. Can't have it at the level of the curb. It needs to be lower than the face of the ash wall. So um, at t actually, actually bring that manhole cover down. So that was, a set, that was the second little setback. They're bringing it all up. They have all the way up to about 4th Street right now. Now, um, I need to have an update call with body construction because originally it was supposed to be completed, signed, sealed, delivered by November 15th. So that's not happening obviously, because they haven't finished all the rest of the tear out. But what will they do between now and the 15th? That's what, that's what we need to find out. That would be the most recent update for them. I imagine, again, I don't want to speculate, but I, I would think that they're, they're looking at the winter and the frost, and they've got, to make, um, they've got to make what is happening around 9th and 10th Street correct. Long and short of it's like this. Around 9th and 10th Street, when you carved out the portion of the, the bike path, it took what should have been the depth of the water lines, the sewer line right there. They had plenty of earth covering it there to insulate it during the frost. But when you take off that section of earth, it actually lowers the depth of where those pipes are. And so they need to get the retaining walls built. They need to bring in earth again. And this is all something that I've told is getting done. And they need to make sure that those pipes are taken care of for those residents because we cannot have those water lines breaking on those residents. So that's the, that's the problem they're solving right now. Um, as far as the schedule to have the asphalt laid down for that portion, um, I will find out if they're going to try to make a run from, oh, I don't know, I'd say, what, Kearney? No, I'd say all the way down um, south as far as it go, until they get to about 4th Street. Because I don't anticipate them bringing up the rest of the concrete and the pavers right now. They're just too late. I don't. I don't just see them. Listen, I mean, time. It, things going to start. Asphalt going to start shutting down, and I mean, yeah, by the middle by the middle of the month, the asphalt shops are going to shut down. So they need to make a move. And when they do, the asphalt goes down quick. I mean, quite honestly, they're going to once it's all prepped and the trucks roll, the asphalt's going to go down. It's going to happen in a day or two, and the bike path's going to be there. It's just making sure that all the finalized punch lists about what goes under the asphalt is taken care of. And I know that they're finalizing that right now. That the inconvenience if we don't get it down for the entire winter. No, it would be. It, it, I'd be disappointed. I would to be disappointed in that because um, that is going to inconvenience some residents, and you know, and and that shouldn't happen. And so it's our job to hold them accountable too. So I will. I'll get an update from the contractor and see when we're going to get that done. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right. Hearing nothing else, Your Honor, I make a motion to adjourn. Support. 
Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Have a good night, everybody. Enjoy the craft show.